Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at lowest common multiple word problems. So these are a little bit more challenging, they're probably aimed at around about grade 4, grade 5 of a GCSE maths. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment below and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at LCM or lowest common multiple word problems. Okay, these are fairly popular actually on uh, GCSE Maths, so it's well worthwhile stopping the video, having got each of the questions and then comparing your solutions. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. Bus A and Bus B both leave Leeds, the great city of Leeds, at 11 o'clock. Uh, bus A stops every 8 minutes and Bus B stops every 14 minutes. Uh, assuming they're on a circular route what when could they both meet in Leeds again all right so let's have a look at what uh, what we're looking at here so we've got um, if it stops every eight minutes let's have a look at then the um, a factor tree for eight minutes that's going to be two and four and that's going to be two and that's going to be two now if you're not familiar with how i'm doing this or why i'm doing this in a particular way please do have a look at uh, some of the earlier videos that will give you a few more examples okay so 14 well again factor tree for 14 that's going to be two and seven all right so if i now put this into a venn diagram just to display the information i've basically got um bus a and I've got bus B. Okay, so this is A and this is B. All right, so let's have a look at what's common. Well, the number that's common to both is going to be two. So I'm going to pop that in the middle. And then if I look at uh, bus A, well, I've still got those twos here, which are in that set. And then I've got this bus B, which has got a seven over there. So hopefully that is okay for you. It represents the information that we've got. So if I want to find out the LCM, what I do then is basically multiply all all of these numbers together. So the LCM is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. Okay, well, um, however you calculate that, you should get 56. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 7 is 56. So basically, the buses will meet 56 minutes later. Remember, we were talking about minutes here. So when could they both meet in Leeds again? Well, they could both meet at 11 56 a.m. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, let's move on then to question number two, which is by far away my favourite question. Um, one of my favourite questions I've ever written. And it says my first snooze alarm. I write these questions, by the way. My first snooze alarm goes off every six. My second goes off every seven. My third snooze alarm goes off every eight. Assuming all the alarms went off at seven o'clock in the morning, how long will it be before they all sound again? And I absolutely have to get up. OK, <laughs> so we're going to use exactly the same principles. Let's have a look at the first alarm. Well, that's every six minutes. So the factor tree for that is going to be two and three. OK, let's look at seven or the second alarm, which is seven minutes. Factor tree is going to be one and seven. OK, and then eight minutes, which is the third alarm. OK, is going to be... It's making me laugh. Um, two times four and then two times two. OK, hopefully that's no surprise to you. So let's have a look then at converting that into a factor tree. OK, so bearing in mind also that we are working in minutes here. So we've just got to bear in mind this is a minutes um, calculation. So we've got in this particular case, we've got three alarms going off. OK, so we've got alarm, the first alarm, the second alarm 
and the third alarm. Okay, are there any numbers that are common to each of these? Well, actually there aren't, but the first and the third alarm has the number two, which is common to both of them. So I can put that into here. Bearing in mind, I'm putting it into here, not into this one, because this one would include the second alarm. So just be very careful where you place numbers in a Venn diagram. Okay, so let's have a look then at what remains. Well, uh, the first alarm, I've got a three here, which is the six minute uh, snooze button, and that's gonna go into here. The second alarm, I've got a one and a seven. Well, one, we can ignore it. I'm gonna put it in actually. So I'm gonna use one and seven, and there it is. Okay, that threes I've also used. And then finally, I've got the eight minute third alarm, which is two and two. Now again, they're in this particular set. Okay, so hopefully that's all right for you. Again, I would sort of suggest if, you, if you're not sure, have a look please at some of the earlier videos and the earlier questions. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're gonna work out the LCM. Well, the LCM is all of these numbers multiplied together. And again, I'm gonna put them up, I'm gonna put them in ascending order. So that's gonna be one times two times two times two times three times seven. And if I calculate all of that, what I'm actually gonna get is 168. But don't forget, that's 168 minutes. Okay, so it's 168 minutes from seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay, now if you work that out, bearing in mind there's 60 minutes in an hour. Okay, so that's gonna be two hours and there's 48 minutes left. So it's gonna be two hours and 48 minutes left. Okay, so when do I absolutely have to get out of bed? <laughs> okay, it's gonna be 9.48 a.m. Okay, which I would imagine you are very late. Okay, so hopefully <laughs> that's okay for you to get some idea. Um, I mean, obviously I'm just uh, joking about a snooze alarm here, but it could be other types of questions. So this is perhaps the next one's a little bit more serious <laughs> where we're looking at a lighthouse. Okay, so this is question number three. So please do stop the video have a go at the question, compare your solution. So this one, um, probably fairly common actually, these sorts of questions. Lighthouse has two lights, one that flashes every 14 seconds. Now, the only slight issue of this is that they said one that flashes every two minutes. So what we have to do is remember that we're gonna change that two seconds, it's 120 seconds, okay? But the principles are exactly the same. What we're going to do is we're gonna convert it now to um, a Venn diagram. Okay, a Venn diagram by way of doing a factor tree. So let's have a look at the 14 seconds first. We've got 14 seconds and that's gonna be two and seven. Okay, if I have a look at 120 seconds, well again, I'm gonna work down to 60, two, 30, two, uh, 15, okay, and that's gonna be three, and that's gonna be seven. Okay, so hopefully that's okay for you. So let's write that out now as a Venn diagram to represent the information. So what we've got, well, we've got lighthouse, um, light A, and then we've got light B. Okay, so this A is going to be the one that flashes every 14 seconds, and B is going to be the one that flashes every 120 seconds. Okay, so again, we're going to look for the common numbers. Well, the common numbers are going to be two. Okay, so that's going to go in the middle there. There aren't any other common numbers, so this one is relatively straightforward. I can put seven into A, and then I've got one, two more twos. I've got a three. Oh, actually, um, it's not a seven, it's five, I beg your pardon, sorry about that. And a five that goes into that. Okay, um, I think I'm still laughing about the snooze alarm. Okay, so hopefully that's all right for you. And if we wanna find the LCM, we just basically multiply those numbers together. So the LCM is gonna be, again, in ascending order, two times two times two times three, 
times 5 times 7, and however you calculate that, that will give you 840. Now, don't forget, that's 840 seconds, all right? And the question is asking us, when will they next flash together? So what we've got to do is convert that seconds into minutes. Well, as you know, 840 divided by 60 will give us the amount of minutes, but there will be different ways of calculating this. As I think I've mentioned before, this is generally a non-calculator type topic. I can't guarantee it, but generally it is. So you might have different ways of doing it. I would firstly start with it as a fraction, and then I would divide through by 10, so I get 84 over 6. And then really, I just think I would use some sort of short division. I would say, well, in that case, it's fairly easy. I'm just going to do 6 into 84. So that's going to be 1. I've got 2 left over. 6 into 24 is 4. So actually, that's going to be 14 minutes. OK. So if they first started to flash at 10 p.m. Um, in the evening, then the next time they're going to flash is going to be 10, 14 p.m. of the same evening. OK, I hope that's been OK for you. Um, please do add any comments below if you're not sure about anything and I'll always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you. I'll look forward to uh, responding to your comments. OK, so the next one then is one that I've allowed a whole page for. Now, again, it's one that um, I wrote myself, but it's based on Probably a reasonably good, I, I don't know too much about car servicing, but it's probably a reasonably good idea that you change the oil filter every 3,000, the air every 5,000, the fuel every 8,000. I'm not sure about the fuel one, but hopefully you'll get some idea. So with this, um, the car is driven 1,500 miles per month. And if all three are changed on the 1st of January, after how many months should they all be changed again? OK, so this is going to be a bit of a long haul this this one because we've got numbers that we've got to work out factor trees for which are going to take some time so um you might need to stop the video have a go at this but the principle is exactly the same so what we're going to look at first is oil and that's going to be 3000 okay now what i always do as i've mentioned i divide through by two first and i just basically keep dividing by two until i get to the point where I can't anymore, <laughs> okay, which is this point where I've got, um, sorry, 375. Now, 375 is divisible by five, but actually it's just kind of easier for me to know that it's divisible also by three. Now, the reason I know that is a little trick is that seven plus three is 10, and 10 plus 5 is 15. So if you add up the digits, if they are a multiple of 3, it means you can divide by 3. And I know I can, so I can divide that and that becomes 3, and I've now got 125, OK, which isn't divisible by 3 because the digits add up to 8. OK, however, it is divisible by 5, and I'm going to have that as 5 and uh, 25 and then 5 and 5 again. OK, so with this particular question, you really do need to be very, very methodical in your approach. OK, let's have a look then at air. OK, so with air, again, I'm going to start a factor tree at 5,000. I'm going to start with 2 and it's going to give me 2,500. Then I've got 2 again and it's going to give me 1,250. I've got 2 again, it's going to give me 625. OK, now I can't divide that by 3, but I can divide it by 5. So if I divide that by 5, I get 125. Now, actually, very helpfully, I've already got the factors there so I can just copy them out. So it's actually not as bad as you think. OK, so hopefully now we've got air. Let's have a look now at fuel. And again, very similar um, way of doing things. I've got 8,000. I'm going to divide that by 2, 4,000, 2, 2,000. 
Uh, that's going to be two again, and that's going to be one thousand. Two again, that's going to be five hundred. Two again, that's going to be two fifty. Two and guess what comes out one hundred and twenty-five again, which I've already got the factors for, so I can do this as five twenty-five. 5 and 5. OK, so if you are methodical in your approach, then hopefully um, you'll be able to kind of follow that through in a relatively you know, straightforward way. So the difficulty now we've got to do is we've got to translate that and put that into a Venn diagram. And hopefully you'll be able to see this OK on the video. Um, if you're not sure about the question, it might be worthwhile just stopping it now uh, copying out this question if you've not downloaded it, but copying it out and then having a go yourself. So we're going to translate all of this information onto a Venn diagram. OK, now I'll try my best to kind of make it work for you, but it's going to be a little bit tricky with um, trying to put everything together. So let's have a look at this. I know that the middle bit is going to need to be relatively large okay so let's do something like that okay so i've got oil and this is air and this is fuel okay so as i'm going through these things what i'll do then is i'll try to cross them off for you okay so the very very top of the screen is where it starts OK, you can just about see that at the very, very top of the screen there, hopefully. OK, so let's have a look and see if we can work these through. So what we're going to end up with is two. Um, now, I know there's three lots of two, so I'm actually going to get rid of three lots of twos at least. OK, and that's going to put them right in the middle. One two, three lots of twos. OK, now I know also there isn't a three that's common. So I'm just going to put a little dot there. OK, and that just makes my life a little bit easier. But then I'm also going to now have a look at the fives. Well, I know there's definitely three fives. One, two, three, because all those are the factors of 125. So I can actually put in one, two, three, fives at the bottom there. OK, well, what have I got left? Well, I look at oil. As I mentioned, oil has got a three on its own. OK, so I've now got rid of everything to do with oil. Let's have a look at air. Well, I've used everything except for one five. So I'm going to get rid of that five and put that into there. OK, and then finally, if I look at fuel, well, I've got three lots of twos that I haven't used. And I'm going to put that into the Venn diagram and two, two and two. OK, and here comes the calculation. So again, um, this is probably, to be fair, much more of a calculator type question. But, you know, um, it's not too bad. I'm going to write this out, actually, where I've got to multiply as an LCM. I'm going to say, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's two to the power of six multiplied by a three, one single three, three to the power of one, if you like, and then five, and that's to this to this power of four. So there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, four lots of five. OK, and again, um, if you put that into a calculator, it'd be fairly straightforward to do, but you're going to end up with one hundred and twenty thousand miles. OK, and that is actually the LCM of three thousand, five thousand and eight thousand. So um, hopefully you got that, but it would take a little bit of kind of a very methodical approach. OK, we need to go back to the actual question. I'll always go back to the question because I think sometimes you get carried away way with these calculations but it says the car is driven 1500 miles per month how many months after the 1st of January would they all be changed again so in other words how many lots of 1500 are there in 120,000 so I can again I can do this as 120,000 divided by 1500 knock off the zeros OK, and I've got basically one, two, zero, zero divided by 15. However you work that out, you should get 80 months.
And that actually is the answer to the question. So that's round about, if you like, six and a half years. OK, which again is probably right for at least having a, a fuel filter changed and them all together as a major service. OK, so hopefully that's been OK for you. Um, it's not too bad a question, but it does take a little bit of methodical working through. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always reply and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.